venison trotters. So these are from a whitetail from Wisconsin, and you'll see this is just the bottom portion of the trotter. What I've done so far is we cut the deer's leg off, cut the legs off at the knee joint, you know, with a saw, or you could articulate it with a knife, whatever you want to do. Then I cut them into thirds. This is the bottom third, because uh, it's just easier to kind of do the detail work like this. You can skin the whole leg too, uh, but because the legs are long, they just are little, they can be a little unwieldy to work with. Anyway, the first thing you want to do, this is an animal's foot. So you want to soak it in warm water. You want to use warm water because cold water is not going to help you remove the dirt as much. Uh, warm water kind of gets things moving a little bit. You want a good brush. And I'm just going to go and kind of scrub this guy. And I'll run it under water until the water runs clean. And then I'm going to dry them out on a towel. Another thing the water does is it keeps the fur from getting all over the place. If you skin the deer, you know that sometimes it can just be a fur factory and fur is not a wild edible. Now to kind of the detail part, you're going to need a couple specific things. So I've done this with like three different deer now and I finally feel like I'm getting the hang of it. What you're going to need is a sharp serrated knife. I got a bread knife. And then you want like a skinning knife or a nice paring knife. This is a buck 102. This is one of my favorite knives. I, I use this thing a whole heck of a lot. I mean, skinning deer, hunting mushrooms, and I wear it around the house. It just makes me feel like a boy scout. Awesome knife. Anyway, you're going to start at the top and obviously be careful. And you're just going to skin it. You want it freshly sharpened. See how that knife's going through that skin like that? The skin is tough. The knife is sharp. You want to have a freshly sharpened knife. And you're just going to go through and articulate the skin. You're just skinning it. So we're not going to worry about these. They're small, so we're going to discard them just because it would be kind of hard to trim them around. Hard to trim around them, rather. So here's another important part. I'll zoom in here a little bit. This part, we need to cut this so that we can bend the hooves apart and get in there and trim it. So I'm just gonna go straight down. Ah, perfect. That's gonna make things just a little bit easier. Now, we need to switch knives. This is where the serrated knife comes in, and this is really the key here. Because it's the hooves are tough. Uh, they're softer at the top than they are at the bottom, but they're tough. And it's like cutting through leather, and even if you got a sharp knife, it can be a little tricky. So I found the serrated knife really seems to work magic. So don't be afraid to cut into it like this so we can get the most hair off as possible.
Okay, so we get our cleaned trotters. They're going to end up looking something like this. Nice and clean. See, there's no fur. But I'm going to go ahead and clean them again. Just wash them off and give them a good rinse. And I'll pay special attention here to the bottom of the hooves because you can get dirt in there. Uh, but even so, we're going to cook these. I'm going to cook these and make broth out of them. Really, really freaking good, strong bone broth. And the nice part is that even if there's a little bit of dirt still stuck on there, it will fall to the bottom and you can kind of just pour the top off and you'll see as it settles, like you can see what you don't want to put in your soup. And even so, you know, humans have eaten far stranger things. This is real food from a real animal that did real animal things. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to smoke them and then I'm going to braise them. And after they're done braising, you're going to have this. So I cooked them for 24 hours and they're going to be falling apart or after I smoked them. First I smoke them two hours at 250 and then I cook them for 24 hours with vegetables and stuff you'd make soup out of and then all the connective tissue is going to kind of fall off. You take the bones out but the real beauty here is, and I know this is kind of gnarly, inside the hoof is a nugget of meat and it is really good meat it is almost like wiggly sea urchin or something like that uh, also the toe bones these make great dice this is the wiggly piece of meat and this thing is like it's like eating an oyster it's not like super fatty it's like pure collagen you put some salt on it it's smoky and delicious and this is it's like eating caviar or something. It's awesome. So I'll take all that out of those. That's how you trim those and clean those after they're cooked. I'll take all the connective tissue. You're going to have a big mass of like wiggly stuff left over. And what you do is, I used to do this with pork trotters. You take all that wiggly tissue, which will look, you know, it's going to look a little unappetizing. You mince it as fine as you can and then chill it, and what you get is a brick of venison trotter. And from here, I will, this is after it's cooled, obviously you can see this is just like rock solid. It's like head cheese. So I'll take this, I'll get it warm, and I'll mix it with a little garlic and parsley, maybe some mushroom duck cell. And then what I'll do is cut this into chunks and then bread it and fry it. And it's gonna be a little bit like garlicky, herby, creamy, melty, delicious deer trotter tater tots. And I tell you what, People don't like to eat feet because it's a type of offal, technically. You can serve deep fried trotter cakes to anybody. Uh, another name that uh, chefs like to use for them is chromasqui, which to me should mean it's made with confit, but it's kind of a moot point. Call it chromasqui, bread it and fry it up, and serve it with a little bit of pickled onion aioli or something sharp, lemon aioli, whatever you got. And people will go nuts for it, and nobody will know that they're eating a deer foot. I guarantee ya. Here's the trotter cakes I was talking about. I used to serve these as an appetizer. Nice cheap appetizer uh, made from pork trotters and they're just crispy, delicious, sticky, ooey gooey. They're really good. Uh, serve them with some kind of lemon or mayonnaise, whatever. 
The next thing is super rich trotter broth. So just like bone broth, I cook the trotters after I smoke them. That's why the stock's really dark. Cook them for 24 hours and you're gonna get that wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Finally, fish. This will sound a little weird, but steamed cod with trotter mushroom sauce. So the trotter sauce, I mix it with mushroom duck cell, lemon juice, herbs, butter, and wine, and it's super rich. So you serve it with meat that's really light, which is where the fish comes into play. Finish it off with some herbs and lemon juice, and it is a really good and very creative way to use that.